Hey guys, Proper English here. Today we're going to learn about binary counters. Now, if you don't already understand binary, you should go check out my tutorial. You'll learn it, you'll come back, and you'll understand this perfectly. The other things that you're going to need to know today are AND gates and T flip-flops. So if you don't understand either of those things, you should check out my need to know tutorial where I talk about how they work and I show you the specific models that I'm using in this binary counter today. All right. So, let's take a look at the counter. Now, I've got three bits. I've got a 1-bit, a 2-bit, and a 4-bit. And, so when I send a pulse, now it's a 1-tick pulse because we're relying on block drops here, it's going to hit both of these sticky pistons, cause them to drop their blocks. And this sticky piston is part of a T flip-flop, and it'll turn the 1-bit on. This sticky piston is part of an AND gate, and it'll when it drops its block, that's one input for the AND gate on. So let's take a look at how that works. So I'll send a pulse, and there we go. It's pretty fast. So we've got the one bit on, because this piston dropped its block. Then we've also got this AND gate on. So the, the piston dropping its block, that's one input on. When I send the pulse through here, that's the other input to the AND gate. So when I send that pulse, it's going to hit both the one bit and the two bit. It's going to turn the two bit on and the one bit off, and that's counting up to two. So let's take a look. So now we've got zero, one, zero, and that's a two. And we can take a look at our AND gates. The AND gate for the one bit is off now, and that means that only the one bit will toggle next time. The 2-bit AND gate is on, so we'll, uh, we'll see that toggle in a second. Let's do that. So now we've got the 1-bit on. That was the only one that was affected for this last round. But now we've got both of these AND gates on, so when we send a pulse through here, all three bits are going to get affected. So let's try that. And there we go. So now it's 1, 0, 0. We've counted up from 3 to 4. All right, so let's, uh, let's extend this for one more bit. So we'll extend this carry line over here. This is a pretty cool design because it allows you to, uh, to have a very fast binary counter um, because what's happening is when you, send a, well, uh, when you send a pulse down it, there's no delay because you know, this is just a wire. The one input to the AND gate has no delay, and we call this a carry line. And, the concept is called insta-carry because you know, it's instant. All right, so this um, this is our AND gate. We can throw some wire in here, add a little lapis. All right, so now we add our T flip flop, and this is a pretty cool T flip flop because you know it uh, it's fast, it's compact, you know, relies on a block drop. Now there are plenty of times where I I hate block dropping because it you know messes up my creations, makes me slow them down or add an extra control, and uh, you know just it's just a pain. But right here, <laughs> it makes a pretty freaking awesome T flip flop, and uh, and so for that I'll accept it. Well, there we go. <laughs> well, we added a little. It's it's eight with a little uh, little apostrophe there. I'll accept that. All right, so let's pulse it a couple more times. Get my arm back out. There we go. Now we're at five. So that's zero, one, zero, one. Looks good. Pulse it again. We're at six. Zero, one, one, zero. So the two and the four bit are on. We can pulse it again. And now we're up to seven. So now if you take a look down here, all of these AND gates are on. Oh, we should probably add a repeater in there. That's, you know, mildly important. <laughs> yeah, okay. There we go. So, now that we've got that repeater there, when we send a pulse through here, it's going to affect all of these, and it's going to count up, because it'll toggle this one on and all of these off. Let's try that. All right, there we go. So, Pretty straightforward. And that's uh, that's how your binary counter works. But now, what if we want to uh, start counting down? All right, so let's take a look at that. It's actually really easy to make this sort of a binary counter count down. So let's do that. 
All we got to do is throw a line right there, toss some torches on it, one for each of these pistons, and then we're going to run some redstone down here and hook it up to a monostable circuit. And what the monostable is going to do, just like, like we've been using it before, it's going to, uh, it's going to toggle these, these pistons by causing a block drop. So it's going to toggle the AND gates. And, and you'll see how that allows us to count down. It's pretty cool. I think it's neat. Um, and it's really simple to do. Really quick, really easy. All right, and let's uh, throw a torch down here. And there we go. Okay, so let's cheat a little and turn it on. And actually, the next thing I'm going to show you is uh, how to hook this up so you can just jump to eight whenever you want or jump to seven or whatever number you want. You can jump, jump all around. All right, so set up like eight. Now let's, uh, let's toggle these hand gates and you can watch them switch. There we go. So let's look at what's going to happen here. So right now, we've got the 8-bit on and the 4, 2, and 1 bits off. So when I send a pulse in, it's going to hit all four bits. It's going to hit 8, 4, 2, and 1. It's going to toggle all of them. So it's going to take 8, and it's going to turn 8 off. But it'll turn 4, 2, and 1 on, so that's 7. So we're counting down from 8 to 7. So let's check that out. We can watch. All right, there we go. We just counted down, and it was that easy. All right, so let's uh, let's keep counting down. We'll go six. We can count down to five. That's zero, one, zero, one. Let's do four, three, two, and one. And let's go to zero. There we go. All right, so we've counted down to zero. Let's awesome we're uh, we're counting down now like I was saying before what happens if we uh, if we want to jump to some number right so let's uh, let's see how we can do that so I've gone ahead and set up this little jumping mechanism here so let's be fancy and throw in 10 and I'll show you how it works all right so we got four bits here just like we got four bits to the binary counter so we got eight four, two, one, so this is one, zero, one, zero, so eight and two are on, that's ten. And what's going to happen is when these pistons retract, these are just to control things a little bit for the demonstration, uh, it's going to send signals into these monostables here. The monostables are going to pulse, uh, pulse these pistons, and it's set up so that we can pulse each of these individually. So we can pulse the one bit, the two bit, the four bit, the eight bit, in this case, we're going to pulse the 8-bit and the 2-bit, and it's going to turn them on, and we'll jump right to 10. So let's try that. We'll hit this button over here, and let's see our result. So, just like I said, you can see that uh, the AND gate for 2 and the T flip-flop for 2 both drop their blocks. Same thing over here for 8. So now, uh, yeah, maybe I feel like uh, counting up to 11. There we go. But then I decide, hey, you know, I don't want to be at 11 anymore. I'm bored of that. So let's uh, let's go back down. Let's go to 9. So there's 10. There's 9. And there we go. But now, what if we're really, really lazy and we uh, we want to we want to just jump back to 9? You know, well, how do we do that? Well, we're gonna need a reset to be able to do that. So let's uh, let's set that up. So, adding a reset line in this sort of a binary counter is actually really, really easy. All we have to do, since this is a binary counter that relies on block drops, is undrop a bunch of blocks. So, let's get my awesome color code going. And there we go. And what we're going to do is we're going to use that same jumping circuitry, except this time we're going to cut it off and we're going to cut it off for long enough so that um, that it sends a pulse that causes pistons to grab their blocks rather than drop them. So we'll set up another monostable here just to uh, keep things faster than a regular button. All right, God, I love these monostables. I've been using tons of them today. 
And so let's throw in five ticks here, and that'll be enough. And then just some wire, and our last little bit of wire. And, uh, well, there's our last little bit of wire. All right, so let's, uh, oh, I got some of these on from my last take. <laughs> let's uh, throw 13 on. Okay, so let's pulse that. Goes over to 13. Looks good. And uh, you know what? I don't feel like 13 anymore, so I'm going to toss a button over there. And now you can see we reset it all. So let's come back here, and uh, this time, let's jump to seven. All right, so let's uh, let's get the jumping going on, and we're now at seven. But now, what if we feel like going eight? But you know what? Counting up really boring. I'd rather count down. So let's start counting down: seven, six, five, and I'm impatient. So, zero. And there you go. You now know how to build a binary counter with loads of functionality. And it turns out that this counter is actually also set up so that you could use it in a, in a CPU as something called a program counter, but you don't need to do that. You can use it for whatever you'd like. You could throw this into mini games. You could throw this into your creative world and you know count whatever you want, anything that you can register with Redstone, like people entering a building or... Uh, I don't know, you could you could count, count creepers or like, you know, you could do whatever you want. All right, so uh, you've also learned some applications for AND gates and T flip-flops and, uh, and you've applied some binary to a, uh, to a redstone circuit. So, yeah, that's pretty cool. If you've got any questions, feel free to ask in the comments. I'm going to provide a world download with this, uh, this completed counter here. You know, I'm sure if you want to play around with this, you could optimize it, make it more compact, or whatever you want. And it's, yeah, it's, it's decent, but I kind of just threw it together. So there are definitely optimizations that can be done. And, uh, and yeah, I hope you enjoyed it. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you guys next time.